So now I'm going to go over how to set up and configure replication between two Cohesity clusters. Cool thing about replication is that it doesn't have to be like to like. So it doesn't have to be one physical cluster to another physical cluster. So you can have a lots of single node virtual clusters or multi-node virtual clusters replicating into a larger physical cluster. Or if you're a smaller shop, maybe you have a physical cluster replicating into a cluster in the cloud. The configurations are endless. First thing you want to do though, if you are looking at it, is going in, I'll put this link in the description. If you look into our firewall ports, in particular replication here in the middle, you see where it shows TCP 443, 11111, 20,000, and then 24444. So from the main dashboard, if you click on infrastructure, remote clusters. Right now we don't have anything configured, so we're going to click register remote cluster in the middle. Now notice we need to put the VIP or the VIP or the node IP address, depending on if you have a multi-node cluster or not. So I'll talk to you about a couple things with this username and password. This is the UI username and password. So a quick easy demo, yes, we could use the admin account and be a local admin. However, I would caution you not to do that. So it really depends on your situation. If you're using Helios for your single pane of glass, then I definitely would not use the admin account here. I would use, I would create a new local account and use the replication role. It's a more secure method of being able to set up replication from to and from clusters. So in case you don't know how to do that, from the main dashboard, click settings and then access management. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new local user. For the purpose of the demo, I'm just gonna call it rep. You know, you can call it replication, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna select the role of replication. And that's the only role I'm gonna give it. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit add. If you're curious under this access management, if you click on roles and click on replication, this will show you how locked down this account is few things that this account can do it can view cluster details it can look at the account security and read storage domains that's pretty much it so a more secured method to do that the thing you want to know is you need to do this on both clusters so this is cluster b on the right hand side if you click settings uh, access management we're creating local accounts in this demo and i'm just going to call it the same thing and just so you can see, I'm logged in as local admin. If I log out, let's say we want to log in with this new account, you'll get it does not have privileges and that's expected. Again, we want this account to be locked down. We want this to be in a secure manner. So this is why I would recommend creating an account and just giving it the replication role. So let's go back. Infrastructure, remote clusters, and we're gonna register a cluster. It's IP address, it is not by the DNS name. Now I can select a different interface group. If I have a special VLAN, I want to send replication traffic down. That's a more advanced topic, but we could set up this. Right now I'm in a lab and it's pretty much a flat network. So I'm just going to automatically select. So when you go to the next window, this is where you have a couple options. You could enable remote access. And if you're using Helios, I would use Helios as my single pane of glass to use remote management. If I'm not using Helios, this is another option I could, but then you have to go back to the account and give it more permissions. If you give it the replication role, by default, it's not going to have enough permissions. You could jump into another cluster and basically not be able to click anything. So it's even lower level than uh, viewer access in my opinion. If you give it full admin access, then when you jump onto another cluster, it has admin access. That's where it's really important to make sure you're using MFA and SSO when you're setting these clusters up. The big thing here is now we need to uh, put a mapping on our storage domains. These do not have to match, just so you're aware. This is from cluster A to cluster B in this case, but I could put this in a different storage domain. Now to me, if I wanted to add another one, because we do have two of them on here, we can add that. So your mileage may vary on your environment. I like to enable distribute load and encryption. I go ahead and generate a key on this first side, and then we'll go ahead and hit copy. And then the other options you have is if you want to throttle, you have the ability to throttle anytime replication is running. And if we want to override the throttle, let's say maybe at 9 p.m. or something to that instead of uh, quiet time we're going to give it a throttle and override that so instead of 800 i'm going to give it 1600 obviously it needs to make sense here i can't add multiple schedules i can have multiple days per week and so on and so forth quiet times meaning it's not going to go at all throttle i could 
override the existing throttle every time it goes or I could make it a little more strict if I need to. So you have the flexibility to do that. I'm just going to turn that off because the lab is throttled enough. Hit continue, gives you a summary and then click register. So we have this on Cohesity A, going to Cohesity B. Now we need to flip over to Cohesity B and basically do the same thing. We already created the account. So on encryption on this side, I'm just going ahead and paste what was in the buffer and then hit continue. Just remember, we're just enabling replication, setting up our mapping and making the options match and then register. In order to have replication running, even if you're going from site A to, to site B in that, you know, site B is your DR site, you do have to enable this on both sides for it to work correctly. So one last thing, now that we have replication going, we need to go into our protection policies. If you're not familiar with that, a policy is how often we're doing backups, how long we're going to retain them. So you see here, we already have one set up for replication, but just so you can see, we can create a new policy. And I can say local and replication. You know, maybe we want to back it up once a day, but maybe we want to back up every uh, four hours. So I want to select more options. Weekly, I also want to have a, a monthly. Now notice here in these policies that we have, this is a new thing in 681, that data lock is enabled. What data lock does is it locks that snapshot so the local admin would not even be able to delete it. Cohesi support or Cohesi engineering will not be able to do it. It's a worm lock on these snapshots. If I don't want that, I can remove it, but it is on by default. So the big thing we need to do to make sure that's doing local backups, keeping a, every four hours, doing weeklies, doing monthlies, but we really want to add replication at the bottom. We're going to select our remote cluster. And then here, how often do you want it? Do you want to have it once an hour, once a day? It's typically what I would do. So we'll say uh, once a day, We're going to how long are we going to retain this replication? It's on a DR site. Do we want to retain it for two or three months? And then it also has a data lock on it. Do we want to Maybe we want to lock it for four weeks. Whatever the case may be, you get the idea. And so we're going to select cluster. If I didn't have replication already set up, I can click uh, re register remote cluster and do that. But we're going to go ahead and select that. If I do have a procedure where I need to have full backups only, then I can enable that. And I keep in mind that means more, more data is going to be transferred over the wire if we do that. And hit create. So now we have a new policy. See the little lock icon and for our backups, if I wanted to go, we have virtual as one of them that we already had a couple of replication I did from another video. If we want to go ahead and hit edit, we'll just hit from the drop down. We're going to select the new policy that we created. You get the summary here and just hit save. So now that schedule is going to kick in every four hours, it's going to create a new snapshot. If I wanted to go ahead and do a run now and, and force the replication to go ahead and go, then that's what we, we can do. It automatically picks it up because that's what's in the policy. If I wanted to change it, then I could make some changes, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell it to run. And that's all you need to do. So that kind of gives you the full gambit of setting up replication, you know, make sure you adjust the policy, a best practice of creating a local account and using the replication rule. That's my personal opinion. All right, so we see the new job is going off. We have the local backup and the replication. Replication does not have to wait for all the VMs to be done before it sends the replication over. I hope this was helpful and informative and thanks for watching.